Well, it's almost the middle of the afternoon and I slept so late that I combined breakfast and lunch with my little some kind of things I got from the frozen breakfast Jimmy Dean section. And I don't like having to go in the kitchen and cook breakfast. I just eat the easiest thing I can find. Usually it's a piece of bread dropped down in my toaster and that's breakfast. But today I didn't get that until 11.30. So anyway, I think I've got a good story for you today. I I've wanted to tell this one for a long time because it's one of those things when you just need a good laugh for the day. Well, I decided today is that day. And I'm hoping you pay close attention that you're going to get that good laugh today. This goes back a number of years. I have a friend who at the time owned a nice little boutique gift shop. When I went in that shop, I, I couldn't come out without buying something. And she called me one morning and said, I'm getting ready to go to Hilltop, North Carolina on a buying spree. This is the season. Would you like to go with me? Well, before I swallowed my tongue, I said, yes, I'll go with you. I couldn't wait. I'd heard so much about that place and where you could find things cheaper. And of course, that's where all of the buyers go. So the day came. I, uh, I'm driving my pretty white Buick LeSabre. Now I've had several cars through the years and they were all nice cars. But nothing compared with the Buick LeSabre. You know, it was one of those cars that had the sedan seat that goes all the way across. You could, three people can ride in the front seat. Well, they used to anyway. And I just loved that car. It was such a smooth driving car. And it was pretty, it was pretty. So, I realized after I filled up my gas tank and and had the car washed, I'm driving down the interstate. Oh my gosh, I'm running late. I'm about 15 minutes behind time. Now I'm one of those people that I'm on time. You say 10 o'clock, I'm there at five minutes or 10. I'm a very prompt person. So it bothers me when something happens and I, I'm running a little bit late. Well, now those were the days just before the popularity of your cell phone. I didn't have one. There's no way I can call my friend and say, I'm running late, but I'll be there. So I'm a little bit jittery about that and I'm driving down the interstate and I think, well, I'll pick up a little speed. Well, I get closer to my destination and uh, there's a big white truck in front of me. It, why can't he go a little faster? And I thought, well, I could pass him, but I'm afraid if I do that, I'll miss the road signs and I might miss the ramp where I turn off. So I'll just stay behind him. And I stayed close behind him for two or three miles. And finally he gives his turn signal. I said, oh my gosh, we're at the turn off already. So he turns his truck to the right, very moving very slowly up that ramp. And I follow right behind him because I'm getting off the interstate too. Well, he slows down. Why is he slow? He's going so slow. This is ridiculous. And we move on 
and I can't go around him. And suddenly I realize this big white tractor trailer truck has led me right into a way station. What am I going to do? I've got to get out of here. I, I have to get around him. Well, there's one thing I'm going to tell you. If you've never gotten caught in a way station, this you should remember. There's only one lane. There's a curb on both sides of that lane, and you can't get out. You're going to stay right behind the vehicle in front of you, and the vehicle, every time, is going to be an 18-wheeler. Well, there I was, stuck. I was about to die of embarrassment. I was looking to my right and looking to my left, hoping nobody saw my car. Big white truck, pretty white Buick. So I just mosey on up behind him and he stopped and I stopped. Now, you know, those 18 wheelers have a great big mirror on the driver's side, about that long and wide. And if you're right behind that truck, you can see the upper half of the driver. And what I saw was a very handsome man grinning from ear to ear. I could count every tooth in his mouth and they were sparkling white. He had his eye on me and he was thoroughly enjoying watching my misery. What was I gonna do? I don't know what they do in way stations. How, to, how long is it gonna take? So I can't do anything but just sit there and wait, but I can still see his face in that mirror. And that's not a good sign. You look this way and you look this way and you look down. And when you look up, there's that face with pearly white teeth showing. All of a sudden, I look in my rear view mirror, and what do I see but another 18-wheeler pulling up right behind me. It was also white, three white vehicles. This can't be happening to me. It just can't be. I, I just can't live through this. It's taking too long. What in the world do they do in a way station that takes so long? I'm getting nervous. I start tapping the steering wheel. And I look down, and I, I can't look in the rear view mirror because I'm looking in the face of another handsome driver and the hood of his truck is bouncing he's laughing so hard what do you do I kept tapping the steering wheel of the car move move can't you go now no, he's not going to move, and I'm not going to move until he moves. So I look over to the right, and there's a little building sitting over to one side, and there's a young man who steps outside of that building. He's got on a ball cap, and he looks over in my direction. I said, yeah, that's all I need is a third man staring at me, having the time of their life laughing at me. So he takes off his ball cap and runs his fingers through his hair and he looks over at me and kind of shakes his head a little bit. And what can I do? I just went. And he shook his head yes and grinned real big. But I was still stuck between two white 18 wheelers and I wasn't going anywhere. So finally, 
I noticed the one in front of me started jumping a little and it started moving ahead. Oh my gosh. He's finally, he's finally going to go. And he's moving very slowly. And I'm right behind him. And he moves a little to the right, just enough for me to go around him on the left. I put my foot on that gas pedal. I went around that 18 wheeler like I was on an S car racetrack. I wouldn't look up at that big mirror for anything because I knew I was gonna see those pearly white teeth and big blue eyes looking down at me. I got past him onto that interstate and I didn't let up until I got to the ramp, which was another mile away. I took that ramp and I kept looking in my rear view mirror and thinking, please don't let him turn off here too. He'll follow me wherever I'm going. He's going to follow me. I know he just has to because he's getting such a kick out of this. Well, I got down to the traffic lot. I turned to the right. I'm going to take the country road to my friend's house. Running late anyway, so I pick up speed a little bit more. And it's about five more miles before I get to her house. And I'm thinking, do I tell her why I'm late? I don't think I can do that. She's going to crack up if I tell her I went through a way station. So I arrived and she was just fine about me being late. She wasn't in any hurry anyway. And finally I said, well, I'm just going to tell you why I'm late. And so I told her my story and she just killed over laughing. She said, I can't wait to tell Jerry this story. Jerry was her husband, very mild mannered man, very pleasant. And I didn't know she was gonna tell him really. I thought, oh, please don't tell him. Just, I don't want anybody to know. So we got in her car and we headed for North Carolina and we spent couple nights there and I had the time of my life going through all of those furniture places, the doodads, and mind you, every booth, now some of those buildings had four floors to them. We went every floor and every building, every booth, and every booth had refreshments. Well, fortunately, I had a tote bag. Well, she was doing business. I was just looking and enjoying myself and following along behind her. So she didn't have time to pick up a cookie or a little snack sandwich or, um, oh, there was one little dessert that one booth had was just absolutely delicious. And there were chicken salad sandwiches, everything was so good. And I'm wrapping them up in paper napkins and dropping them down into my tote bag because I know she's gonna need something to eat soon. And I'm just kind of testing things as I go. So we finished our a buying spree. She picked out a few things, really, really nice things for her shop, and we drove back home. Well, I come on home, and it's, oh, I'd say about a month later, I'm going to visit her, and I pull up in her driveway, and her husband is there. And while we're talking, another man comes out of the house. Well, I don't know who this man is, and Jerry says, oh, Pat, I want you to meet my brother. He introduced me to him. And his brother says, oh, are you the lady that went through the way station? 
Well, I discovered then I was going to be known as the lady who went through the way station. We have had more lights over that, and until you have made the mistake of following a big white 18 wheeler transfer truck into a way station, you can't imagine the misery, especially when it's a woman. A man can do something like that and get by with it. But when it's a woman, it's embarrassing and they won't let you live it down. So meet the lady who went through the way station. That's me, but it won't happen again. Now, I hope you like that little story. I hope you get a kick out of it. And I bet you probably got one pretty much like that that you can tell too. And that's what I consider your laugh for the day. Please tell me you, you did like it. I hope you liked it because that was the, my purpose is to make you smile and give you a story to tell one of your friends. I've got more, more stories similar to that. And now and then I'll tell one of them. And I'm gonna be back in the kitchen again soon, but I've gotta clean it up first. I've been in there making messes. I've been cooking and cooking, and I'm telling you, I think my cooking's getting worse every day, unless it's my taste buds. Now, I can always blame it on that. But I hope you have a good day today. As you can see behind me, the sun is just blazing through my window. And I like it when it's like that. I tried to change my direction for this video because in a small apartment, you don't have too many choices of a background. So sometimes I just move a piece of furniture this way or that way or throw a quilt on the back of the sofa or clear the dining table a little bit so that I can show you a few little collected items that I have. So keep in touch, keep watching, and guess what? We're going to see if the clicker works. It worked to get me on here. And we're going to find out if it worked to take me off again. Okay, that's try number one.